Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Rima. I am a space communications and navigation internship project ambassador. Um, and so I'm here to talk to you guys a little bit about the SCAN internship program, um, as well as talk about my experience. Um, next slide, please. So my name is Rima. I am a senior at NYU studying computer science and data science. Um, and my past experience includes an internship, um, software engineering internship at Allegiant Air. And just this past summer, I was able to intern at NASA as a space communications and navigation software engineering intern. Next slide, please. So what is space communications and navigation? So NASA is an agency with thousands in, of missions and projects. So they all contribute to the agency's vision of discovering and expanding knowledge for the benefit of humanity. So NASA's Space Communication and Navigation Project um, allows NASA to oversee major networks, ensuring communication with science and exploration missions of all kinds, which enables new discoveries. So essentially, Without communication, no mission could launch to the stars or the cosmos in general. Next slide, please. So um, as you can see, there's three kinds of networks that are operating. Um, first is a near Earth network. This is managed by Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, which is actually where I interned uh, this last summer remotely, of course. Um, so this oversees a collection of commercial and NASA-owned um, ground stations that provide communication services up to a million miles away. The second thing um, is the space network. So this is also managed by Goddard, um, and it consists of a fleet of tracking uh, and data, light, data relay satellites um, that service uh, the space network. So this network can offer continuous communication coverage to flagship missions in low Earth orbit, like the ISS. And the last thing is the deep space network. So this is managed by the Jet Propulsion Labs up in California. Um, and this supports the far out missions to the Mars and beyond. Um, so fun fact, the deep space network uh, supports the Voyager missions, which currently fly outside of our solar system very, very far away. Uh, next slide, please. So the Space Communications and Navigation Program doesn't just manage NASA's networks, they also develop innovations that enhance communications and services um, of the agency. So communications and navigation engineers are building networks of tomorrow through sustained technology development efforts. Next slide, please. Additionally, um, the Space Communication and Navigation uh, Program is very important to the Artemis mission, which is similar to the Apollo missions, although this time it's going to be a little bit different because um, instead of just going to the moon for a temporary stay, we're going to be staying indefinitely. So we're gonna be using the Artemis missions as a proving ground for the technologies and innovation that enable our journey to Mars and other planets perhaps. Next slide, please. So to highlight some of the NASA space communication and navigation technology portfolio, first is optical communications. Um, and this uses infrared lasers to provide missions with higher data rates, enabling next generation science and exploration. In positioning and navigation and timing, NASA is developing innovations that improve the ways that we track satellites. So this includes flight-ready atomic clock technology, pulsar-based navigation methods, and systems that enable autonomous navigation. And lastly is NASA's Search and Rescue Office, which provides the international satellite-aided search and rescue programs with expertise in technology development since its inception. Next slide, please. So if you wanna get involved in this really cool work, uh, you can become a SCAN intern. So the SCAN internship is a great way to jumpstart your career. Essentially, each intern is paired with a mentor um, who's an expert in their field. Um, and so these paid opportunities can lead to future work with NASA through continued internships or even full-time employment. Next slide, please. So NASA Space Communication and Navigation Program um, offers a wide variety of disciplines to work in. 
So this includes things from cybersecurity to material sciences, from finance to animation. Um, there's a lot of unique opportunities that are offered. Um, so past internship projects include development of high altitude balloon quantum communications demonstration, a study of nuclear batteries for communication satellites, um, redefining risk ass assessment in cybersecurity, and designing a new small satellite antenna. Next slide, please. So to uh, kind of delve into my experience, uh, this summer I got to work on the operation and visualization tool for the solar system internet. Um, so I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a brief overview of it, um, some background and just the things I got to work on. So essentially the operation and visualization tool um, works as an analysis tool for the network simulations. So when we deploy things up to space, we can use the most effective networks. So the network simulations allow us to evaluate and choose those network structures. So currently, before the implementation of my tool, um, there, the network simulation data was temporarily stored and limited, which makes decisions for network construction very difficult. The way that I was able to resolve these issues was first by automating simulations, second by providing a storage mechanism, and third was by creating a data visualization interface. Um, so this will essentially be able to inform decisions for the near earth network and the deep space network once they start to implement better network um, structures. So this will improve things like navigation, communication and network connectivity on things like the moon, Mars and beyond. And this will allow uh, more higher chance of survival and increase our amount of discoveries. Next slide, please. So to give a bit of background, um, the new network implementation that NASA is working on is called the Disruption Tolerant Network. So this is a network structure that allows the transmission of data consistently and efficiently. Previously, missions were limited and not really well designed because they weren't built to handle disruptions and delays, which are caused by things like solar flares, the moon, other planets, and other things like that. So the disruption tolerant network is able to resolve all these problems because it contains the bundle protocol. And the bundle protocol is essentially a part of the network where data is held at a certain location until there's a definite and reliable path to the next location. So um, in order to determine if this disruption tolerant networking is effective and the best way to construct it, network simulations are imperative because they allow us to formulate a virtual model of the network. So this gives us insights on the protocol behaviors, data metrics like delays, loss, and congestion on the network. Additionally, these simulations are much faster than actual missions. So a mission that would take uh, about 120 days can now be condensed down to just five hours. And the last thing is that they're very easy to construct, which means that we can replicate space conditions like the solar flares or planets getting in the way. Um, so we can determine how effective the network would be if we deployed it. Next slide, please. So now I'm gonna go on to kind of how I did this. Um, so first was the simulation refinement. So initially the tool um, was only built to give small glimpses of network performance. So I enabled um, an increase of output of the metrics so we can really get a close um, understanding of how the network was performing at uh, very small time intervals. The next thing was that I automated the transmission of simulation metrics to a database, which means that we're able to not only get the results very quickly, but also have them permanently stored um, in an organized manner. And the last thing was that I added additional data to better characterize the simulation so we can have a better understanding of what the data means, um, the output, and other things like that. Next was the data plumbing or pipelining, which essentially means uh, the transmission of the data from the simulator to the database. So the way that I did this was first by starting the database from the simulator, making the data feed immediate um, and increasing the efficiency of the transmission. The second thing was constructing and designing the database. And the third was building the queries for the database so we can access actual data. And the last part of the methodology um, was the data visualization interface. So the first thing I had to do was connect the database to a visualization interface to access the data being uploaded from the simulator. Um, I had to select certain values to represent the data and put those into graphs. And then thirdly, like I made dashboards with multiple graphs to give more holistic understanding for the network 
uh, architects and stuff like that to understand and make better analysis of the network so it's easily visible and more comprehensive. Next slide, please. So this was able to improve NASA's capabilities because um, the simulations increase our understanding of the data. I was able to build a database to store the results and I curated a visualization interface to demonstrate the metrics and network performance. And this will improve the ability to run multiple simulations without losing valuable time and effort. Um, additionally, this contributes to better performance on future missions because we're able to construct the best networks and simulate them over and over again until we get it perfect. And then finally deploy that up so we don't lose a ton of money on missions and uh, valuable data as well as time. Next slide, please. So this was really important um, for my career um, and you know interest in the space industry. So this gave me the experience of being able to have hands on, uh, you know, messing around with data, um, creating these systems, other things like that. Ta really taught me the importance of fine tuning data in the context of space networks, as well as building databases for big data and understanding of networks, which I previously had no experience of. Um, so it gave me practice with tools that are commonly used in an industry and a passion for space that extends much beyond the classroom. Um, and so I think that it really does give you, you know, the best experience in which you're able to not only work with these amazing tools and build things from the ground up, but also get advice and help from these really brilliant people in the field um, that are able to guide you and give you advice and not even just about like the development of your tool, but things in the space industry, your career and other things like that. Um, next slide, please. So um, internships, here are some eligibility requirements. So the interns should be US citizens with some limited exceptions. Um, and NASA will also consider students with a min minimum grade point average of 3.0 on a 4.0 scale. They should be at least be uh, 16 years old by the date of the application. Um, students must be accepted or enrolled in a full-time accredited US college or university. Um, recent college graduates are also eligible to apply, and high school applicants must live within 50 miles of their internship to be uh, considered, and also must be a current sophomore, junior, or senior. Um, so in order to apply, here's some information. Um, so please visit intern.nasa.gov to apply. Um, there you'll make a profile and search for the keyword scan to see the available opportunities under the space communication and navigation internship program. Um, internships run through the uh, summer, fall, and spring semesters. Next slide, please. So um, I'm just going to open the floor up to questions. Feel free to type any questions you have in the chat. I'll just ask you a few questions we had from earlier while people are typing. Mm -hmm. So one question we got is, are there any prerequisites or information that applicants should know when applying? Um, okay, so I guess I'm gonna kind of interpret this question as like prerequisites in terms of like things you should know, like knowledge base. Um, I think that in terms of like, there should be a basic understanding, I think, of like the project you're going to apply to. So like the actual subject area, because um, there are a ton of projects on, you know, NASA's website in which you can apply to. Um, and they're really looking for people who are actually like passionate about uh, said subject and have some limited experience. They don't expect you to be extremely knowledgeable. Um, but I think that like, especially for a software engineering internship, they do expect some, you know, experience in coding. Um, but in terms of like the specific, um, I guess the specifics of the project, like networking or disruption tolerant networking, I had no information or like any experience with that prior to. Um, but I did have some like limited experience on um, some protocol, some protocols um, beforehand, which I think did help me. But they do ask like questions about that, and I do think it enhances um, your likelihood of getting selected for the internship. But I don't think like it's an absolutely necessary prerequisite to have like so such specific knowledge on the particular um, project, but more just like 
a good understanding of software engineering. Um, obviously, they expect like a high GPA and stuff like that. So the, there's a lot of factors that are considered when they um, select people for interviews and stuff like that. Um, but I think just having like a good understanding of coding and programming uh, fundamentals is really important. Awesome. So another question we got is, is this something you can apply to multiple times? Like, can you go back and continue working on your project or is it a one time thing? Yeah, um, so you can continue working on the project if you have time. Um, so I know like some people from the cohort that I was part of um, ended up doing fall internships as well. So yeah, you can definitely go back anytime. Um, it's just something you have to discuss with your mentor and see if they are still like open for you know um, people to stay over the fall. Some you know some projects just end in the summer and that's it. Um, but it all kind of depends on the project. But I know some people did get to continue into the fall. It looks like that's all of our questions. So thank you so much for your time. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for having me.